Okay. Hello. Hi. I'm Robert, so I'm senior iOS developer at NetGuru. Uh, and I'm here to talk about MQTT. So the first question is, uh, how many of you know MQTT? What it is exactly at all? Hi, Krzysiek. <laughs> Krzysiek introduced me to MQTT in, in project. So he will be checking <laughs> if everything is true. So MQTT is message queue telemetry transport. Uh, it's a technology, it's a really um, communication protocol which allows to uh, send messages between devices uh, via some kind of uh, server service called broker. So uh, MQTT is lightweight. This is uh, its main uh, quality. What it means uh, that uh, messages are really small. Uh, the whole protocol is optimized for uh, energy usage, uh, so it can be used at small sensors uh, on some, uh, uh, well, every, everything which operates on battery, for example, and we need to assure that uh, it will work as long as possible. Uh, so it's also uh, the second biggest quality uh, is that uh, it's reliable. Uh, it can uh, ensure delivery, which uh, I will talk about later. And uh, to give you some kind of perspective, what is MQTT? What uh, are uh, uh, really advantages of using MQTT uh, instead of any other communication protocol? Let's compare it to HTTP. So uh, let's imagine a situation that you have some sensor and you have uh, some client uh, which uh, needs uh, readings from this sensor. Uh, let's say that sensor makes readings uh, for every second. Uh, or so, or maybe this is not important. But uh, if we want to have the latest data uh, on our client side, always new the latest uh, data, uh, we would have uh, using HTTP, we would have to uh, make uh, request after request every one second to get the latest data. Uh, so it's not uh, really uh, smart, I guess. Uh, and uh, unlike HTTP, uh, if HTTP, uh, HTTP works uh, on the uh, standard of well, fire and forget. So uh, if we are requesting server for some data and server is sending our, uh, this data, uh, it doesn't really uh, care if the data was received, processed, if everything goes well, it just sends it and, and forgets uh, about doing it. So MQTT gives us a chance to really ensure that uh, message was uh, delivered, was processed even, and I will talk uh, about it uh, in a second, also about uh, all of these other qualities. And there is a huge difference between uh, in sizes of messages in MQTT and HTTP. With HTTP, we gave all of these headers, uh, these uh, frankly not uh, at every time necessary data being sent at every request because this is just uh, like a standard for this protocol. The MQTT is uh, created to send only necessary data, so as, uh, as small as possible. Yeah, some biggest players on the market are using MQTT with, and we uh, are not even know about it. So uh, uh, maybe about Messenger. Uh, Facebook Messenger is uh, this product which uh, really um, get to your imagination, right? Uh, this is one uh, of the application everyone uses. But I, I was told at the last presentation I made that uh, it's not uh, true uh, right now. Messenger switched to something else. I don't know, but uh, to uh, really uh, appeal to your imagination, let's say that uh, MQTT is being used uh, in communication between uh, Earth and satellites, for example, uh, or some medical uh, products uh, where you really need to uh, ensure a delivery of a message, for example, because uh, life can depend uh, on it. Uh, so yeah. Uh, it's called message queue telemetry transport, transport but uh, there are no queues in this protocol. And uh, the fact that it's called that way, it's uh, because it was created uh, at IBM uh, in this whole department of message queue something products uh, being uh, just uh, created as a part of uh, product development in this company. And uh, well, as a legacy, it gets this first uh, two, two words in its name. Uh, 
and uh, it have it was created quite uh, some time ago but it's, it's really a fresh uh, protocol it's currently being standardized uh, and uh, in production uh, you can safely just use mqtt because uh, uh, it's like in a third version uh, it's really stable so we don't have to worry that this technology will go away uh, in a matter of months or, or something like that okay so let's say uh, that we have uh, some uh, we want to create a product which uh, will use MQTT first thing we need to, uh, is a broker broker is a service running on a server uh, which runs all the time uh, and uh, the main uh, task for broker is passing the data between uh, between clients uh, which uh, are providing the data and between clients which are really interested uh, in it so broker is this uh, like middle layer between them uh, it's uh, important to know that clients don't uh, really know about each other so uh, if uh, someone has the data it's just uh, send it to a broker uh, and that's it and client also doesn't really know uh, from uh, what from who this data uh, comes but uh, he gets it uh, yeah so the main uh, thing about MQTT is that there is no the direct communication between clients it's uh, via broker and it's done uh, by publishing data to some topic uh, I will uh, speak about it in a second uh, and uh, client gets data by subscribing to its topic and getting data uh, for, for it so topic is just a string it's just like identifier of uh, the place on the broker when the data is stored it's like an address you know URL or something uh, it's structured so uh, it can be just divided like uh, with this slash uh, and uh, it is not uh, required to structure the topics like that but it's uh, really um, uh, it's a good practice I guess and I will tell you uh, why in a second so topic is just this address clients are subscribing for the certain topic are sending to broker message that yeah I am interested in um, any data that will come to this particular place on the server and uh, some uh, some clients will uh, have the data just publishing to this topic okay why it's important to structure the topics because uh, let's imagine that uh, some are we have messaging application right we want to just send messages between clients and we want to know where uh, when so, uh, some particular client is online or offline so every single client are sending uh, its status to the server uh, when app is launched is sending online when uh, it's uh, killed is sending offline but uh, if we have like 4000 contacts in our contact book and we want to subscribe to all uh, statuses for all of the clients we have in our uh, in our contacts book uh, it will, will uh, require us to send 4000 subscriptions to the broker and that's not sounds really wise so we can use something like plus at the uh, one of the levels of the topic what does it mean? It's like, uh, like a convention of uh, topics we want to subscribe to. So, uh, for example, uh, if we have a like, uh, sensor uh, which measures temperature, when we add some plus uh, at the end, any topic that matches this convention, so sensors temperature reading, sensors temperature, I don't know, technical details, sensors temperature, anything, anything from this sensor will be sent to this client who, who subscribed to this certain topic so for example for the case with the messaging application if we are subscribing to users status slash plus uh, we will have statuses for all of the users not only uh, one user or, or something and plus can be uh, put uh, in any part of the topic so uh, for the uh, third point uh, we will get reading from all kinds of the sensors so like temperature or pressure or something like that but it's quite uh, uh, quite nice uh, we can also uh, use uh, this hash symbol uh, because uh, it, it there is a difference plus we can uh, use as uh, one of the levels of the topic but hash can be used for any number of levels so for this example we will get messages uh, for topics like sensors temperature reading but also sensors temperature if there is a topic only with two levels uh, two levels deep 
So uh, with that information, it would be tempting to use hash and subscribe to anything. Like I want to know or know it all. Anything that will come to the broker, I want, I want it. And it is possible, but it's highly uh, not recommended. Because uh, when we are developing applications, uh, for sure we will uh, make some assumptions what uh, will the data be. We will uh, expect, for example, for temperature reading, an integer, maybe, or a float, or, or something. For, like, I don't know, contact info, we will uh, want to get, like, uh, JSON dictionary or, or something like that. When we are subscribing to everything, we are risking that uh, someone will send some unprocessable for uh, us data which will kill the app, which will crash the, the app or something. We don't really want that. So this is possible, but it's uh, mostly used by uh, administrators on the broker side. When they want to really um, monitor all of the traffic uh, between clients. Uh, so that's uh, quite a uh, nice, uh, nice tool to do that. Uh, I told you that the second biggest quality, but maybe for some people it will be the, the biggest from them all quality of MQTT, is quality of service. This is, uh, well, the main difference between HTTP and MQTT. Uh, quality of service is a property of a message being uh, published to broker or subscriptions being made to the broker, uh, which informs broker how, um, uh, how, uh, well, uh, how important is the message? Let's, let's say it like that. So uh, quality of service has three values, 0, 1, and 2. And 0 is just like HTTP, fire and forget. So if we are publishing data to broker with 0, we will send it. But if something goes wrong, something, I don't know, internet interruption or something, and the message will be not delivered, well, that, that's, uh, that's a shame. Uh, the, there is nothing we can do about it. But if we are using one, at least once, um, uh, let's uh, say about uh, uh, example with subscription. So some client is subscribed to uh, some sensor reading and the uh, broker gets uh, this reading so he knows that he has the data client is interested in. So he will send to the client. With quality of service one, uh, he will wait to acknowledgement from the client side to really know that message was delivered. If we, in some reasonable amount of time, which uh, can differ between brokers, which can sometimes be set uh, by a developer, sometimes not, uh, but uh, in a, a reasonable time, let's say a few seconds, if he doesn't get a response, uh, he will send it again. So in this, uh, in this edge case scenario, client can get two messages uh, instead of one if uh, you know, the acknowledgement was sent too late or something. Uh, so uh, if we really want to ensure that message will be delivered, this is OK. But if we really want to ensure that message will be delivered only once, for example, for some kind of medical device, I don't know, perform some, some, uh, something to the patient, and so we don't really want I don't know, taste patient two times if it's not necessary. Uh, we can use uh, uh, the quality of service equals two. It's exactly once. So uh, the good thing about it is that uh, broker will wait for the client to acknowledge uh, that message was delivered. And if he gets it, he will send another message to the client, uh, like, like ping pong. He will send it again to ensure that message was processed. So there is nothing wrong with it. There was uh, delivered once and there was processed only once. But the disadvantage is that, well, MQTT was created to be as small as possible, as lightweight as possible. So right now we have two, uh, two uh, messages sent in either dire direction. So it's twice as costly as the other solution. But it can be uh, used, so it depends on architecture and the certain product, I guess. Uh, one thing worth mention, if some client is publishing with quality of service one, let's say, it doesn't matter that every client subscribed to this, uh, this topic will always get the message. Because uh, quality of service is being set to uh, per, uh, per like, kernel of distribution. So uh, only per publishing uh, to the certain topic and separately to subscribing to the topic. So uh, some client can uh, want to ensure that it would be delivered, it will use quality of service one, that's okay. But clients can use zero, can use two, it doesn't matter. So it's quite flexible and allows us to create a different architecture and different, um, 
uh, different scenarios. Uh, the other thing that is quite nice and is uh, used uh, uh, in a big time in when you are using MQTT uh, is retain status. That can also be sen, uh, set per message and retains uh, per topic. And retain status means that uh, if it's set to false, it works just like we would expect. So if someone publishes message to the broker, broker have some subscribers, he will send this message to, to, it, to them. But with retain status set to true, he will also save this message uh, for any future subscribers. So this message will be uh, saved on the broker side to the point that uh, it will be uh, invalidated. Uh, it can be done by sending a message with empty payload uh, or uh, it will be overwritten with the uh, latest, uh, newest message. Uh, so, yeah. So after our sensor were pub publishing some uh, readings to broker and some client was uh, uh, connecting to the MQTT broker, uh, let's say that uh, publishing is done one time per hour or something. Uh, if this message was set uh, with retain status true, he will get the latest, uh, the latest data. And he will always get the latest data. And this is the huge advantage of using MQTT. Messages will be sent only if there is a data, if there is something that would interest the clients. No need for requesting uh, every second or something to get the uh, latest data. Yeah. So after client uh, is, uh, wants to disconnect, he just send disconnect message, he uh, ends uh, connection, and all retained messages that will be published uh, from that point will be delivered after he will reconnect. But what if, client, uh, what if there is some network interruption and client, uh, I don't know, maybe app, uh, our app was killed, uh, user killed our app. I don't know why if you would do that, but it happens. So uh, in that case, there is no time to really disconnect gracefully from the broker side. And uh, it's quite important, for example, for our uh, example with messaging app, that we want to have online or offline status for every certain uh, contact we have uh, in the phone. So if our user posted online and the app was killed, he is he's not having any chance to post offline. So for the other users, he will be still off online and it's, uh, it can be dangerous, I guess, from perspective of our, our, our app. So uh, there is another really uh, useful tool. It's called Last Will and Message. Uh, last will and testament. So last will is a message that is being sent to the broker uh, at uh, connecting, at uh, first connecting to, to it, uh, which is like the data and the topic which uh, uh, client wants to be published whenever he will uh, disconnect disgracefully, disconnect like with network interruption or something. Uh, yeah, uh, and. Uh, that uh, works like that, that uh, if some something like this happens, so a broker, well, MQT is based on TCP IP, so broker is uh, sending some kind of really lightweight messages from time to time to see if connection is still uh, valid. And uh, if he does not get a response in a reasonable amount of time, he will send this message. So for our case with messaging application, that can be offline status sent. Uh, to the topic user status with uh, ID of uh, this certain user. Any number of uh, clients can subscribe to any number of topics. Uh, also, any number of clients can publish to any number of topics. Uh, and uh, the architecture of our solution can be as complicated as we want. So we can develop a really uh, different, really mm, uh, varied uh, applications. Uh, so it's for developer to, to ensure that uh, it's quite manageable and scalable uh, in the future. Uh, but yeah, there is no need for sensors. For example, in messaging application, communication could be, be between uh, some phones. And it can be done between, as I said, satellites, phones, computers. I guess anything. MQTT is so lightweight that it can uh, be implemented on even smallest uh, sensors. Uh, for example, to uh, replace uh, Bluetooth flow energy, I guess. If there is only one requirement to uh, this uh, particular sensor to have connection to the internet. So that's it. 
Okay, clean session. Uh, there is a property for the whole session that client is uh, when client is connecting to the broker, uh, and it uh, just means that clean session is um, when client is disconnecting, broker is uh, erasing all subscriptions, all data, data maybe not, all subscriptions for this particular client. So if he is connecting again, he will need to subscribe uh, again to all of the topics. When it can be uh, helpful, for example, if uh, we are uh, we are having this messaging app, we are subscribed to uh, statuses of, uh, of some contacts from our phone and uh, uh, we are changing uh, phone and uh, we have another phone with completely different set of uh, contacts so we are not really interested uh, in the statuses of the phone numbers from the previous uh, uh, telephone but we cannot really tell which subscriptions are valid or, or not so we can use clean session true to assure that uh, at every installation the subscriptions will be valid. There will be no, no trash uh, subscriptions, no obsolete uh, things. Uh, but uh, let's say we have uh, like uh, these 4,000 contacts where we need to subscribe, uh, I guess, 4,000 times for something. Uh, it can be quite painful to do it after every launch, every connection, not every installation, every connection, so at, uh, every day, every minute. So uh, it can be painful, so we can use persistent session. Persistent session means that all subscriptions are being kept till, uh, uh, till they're not. <laughs> uh, they, they are being kept between uh, reconnecting uh, of client. It's also quite a useful tool for certain architectures. So there is good to know about this particular uh, solution, uh, if it suits you or not. Okay, some uh, other things, bulk subscription. So as I said, when we are subscribing to contacts information and we need to make 4,000 uh, subscriptions, we can use bulk subscriptions, which will pack all of the topics, all of the 4,000 topics to one message and will send it uh, once. So it will be quite big, but it will not be 4,000 requests sent to the broker, and especially if they are using, uh, like sending serial, it can be really uh, painful uh, for the end user. Uh, also, every message can be encrypted. And well, it's pretty obvious how uh, can, it be, can it be really important for so certain solutions. But uh, you, will need, you must remember that MQTT was created to be really small, really lightweight. And encryption adds uh, some uh, other mm, uh, payload will be uh, bigger than just an unencrypted message. So the good practice is to encrypt things like, I don't know, username and password, for example. But uh, if there is no uh, really need for uh, encrypting messages, just don't do it. Uh, for example, readings from temperature sensor are not really, I don't know, uh, they don't need to be secure. Uh, yeah, so throttling is another uh, mechanism, uh, depending on implementation, I guess. Uh, it's a property of MQTT which allows to uh, uh, debounce messages when there are a lot of messages uh, being sent at once. So, for example, like a user uh, doesn't really uh, use the app uh, for quite some time, there are a lot of data, so we can uh, use throttling which will uh, result with receiving for packets like for 20 messages, not for thousands of messages at once uh, to be processed and uh, mm, it can be helpful. Uh, yeah, offline buffering uh, works, uh, resolves uh, the similar problem. So th this is, uh, that was like in general about MQTT. And uh, right now I want to talk about uh, two frameworks, uh, MQTT frameworks, uh, which I have experience with. So the first one is Coco MQTT. Coco MQTT is quite a nice framework, really uh, nicely written, uh, which resolves most of the typical the daily basis scenarios. Uh, it's written in Swift, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's maintained uh, quite well, uh, so, uh, yeah, so it's pretty fun to work uh, with it. But it has some disadvantages uh, which uh, can be crucial, like for our project, uh, for example. Uh, so let's talk about them 
in the terms of another framework. MQTT client framework is like a beast. It's a, a massive framework which covers almost every scenario. And it's quite surprising how well uh, it's been written. So it's written in Objective-C, but uh, it can be used in Swift project without any problems. Uh, and uh, what are the differences from Coco MQTT? First of all, almost all of the code uh, is tested. Uh, there are uh, unit tests not only for the framework itself, but also for the uh, uh, practical usages of this framework with some brokers. Uh, also, it's uh, being maintained uh, with uh, good care. There are not a lot of issues, uh, open issues on GitHub. Uh, there are really good contact with uh, the creator uh, of this framework. Uh, and uh, for example, reason why we uh, need to, needed to switch to uh, MQTT client framework from Coco MQTT was because uh, Coco MQTT didn't really support box subscriptions. So uh, we had this problem with uh, 4,000 contacts uh, with subscribing for its information. And uh, this framework uh, uh, helped us to solve this problem. So uh, to summarize this, when you want to get to know MQTT, when you want to uh, create some application for yourself, or even commercial application, but you uh, have fixed scope, you know what uh, things you will need to use, uh, you know what things uh, you uh, really have to have in your project, and Coco MQTT has it, use it. It's uh, really easy to integrate it, it's fun to, fun to work with it. But uh, if you, your project is big, needs to be secure, and all of that crap, but uh, most importantly, you don't have fixed scope, so things can change in the future. So I guess like in most of the projects, use MQTT client frameworks because if uh, anything changes, you, will be sh you can be sure that uh, you will be able to create a solution with use of this framework. And that's it. So, do you have any questions? What about the performance, especially compared to HTTP? Because you, you said the main feature is the lightweight of, yeah. of, the, of this protocol, mm -hmm. but HTTP2 also like handles that in a way that maybe they say they send only one header for batch of uh, requests and stuff like that. So could you tell something about the per performance on, on la larger scale? No, I, I cannot. I don't really know HTTP2, so uh, you can ask me, I guess, uh, in a month or two, because my next like goal for, for development is comparing MQTT to uh, different uh, communication protocols, because MQTT is not uh, the only one created for lightweight messaging, for really energy-efficient messaging. And uh, yeah, I, I guess I will compare it for, uh, with HTTP2. Uh, what can I say right now? Uh, it's probably faster either way, because uh, um, when you are uh, working with MQTT and you are seeing what data is being sent, it's like so, so small that it can, uh, couldn't be uh, smaller. Uh, it's even like some properties of the messages are being set by setting particular bits, uh, bytes in uh, just uh, some small uh, properties of the messages, and they are only being sent if there are some, uh, they are really valid. So, uh, yeah. So and what about the keeping the connection be between the broker and the clients? Well, it, it works on TCP IP. So yeah, there, there is an overhead from, from the keeping connection, from pinging uh, these uh, sites. Uh, but uh, I guess it's the same for HTTP. If it, it either it's uh, one or two, so. I think there are some protocols not based on TCP IP, but uh, I am not sure right now, so this and is like a basic layer. And I assume you did some, some uh, commercial project in the technology, right? Yeah, true. And is that purely the, the messaging part or, or what? Uh, yeah, mostly messaging. Uh, it's. Uh, well, so for, for sure we want to know the latest data for uh, users, so users info, so something like that. So I talked about it. But uh, our project currently is communicating with robot. So we have this robot, so he drives and do some 
kind of crazy things. And uh, we are using it for communicating uh, with it, for sending, uh, oh, for example, for sending commands. So uh, when we want to robot to, I don't know, rotate 90 uh, degrees, we are sending this command. And this is where quality of service, for example, is really helpful because we want to, s uh, to be this message to be processed only once, to the robot to only uh, uh, rotate uh, once, not just rotate in circles, for example. So I it's really helpful. Any other questions? Okay, so time for self-advertisement. If you want to know something more, uh, I uh, can really direct you to two of my blog posts. There is like the, the same stuff I just told, but uh, written, so <laughs> you, can, you can check it, uh, check it out. But if you didn't remember, uh, most of the things I said, which can be understandable. I really uh, recommend HiveMQ website. HiveMQ is a broker, it's a commercial broker, but uh, it has the whole section with MQTT uh, described by details. It's really amazing and it's written in this uh, really understandable language, so I really recommend it. And, uh, and yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. Well, I want to thank you to uh, participate today, even uh, if there is Apple keynote event in the meantime. So I really appreciate it. Uh, and that's it. So thank you. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>